WCBI News at 10 starts now. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Cash Matlock. Four people were injured in a shooting last night at the depot in Philadelphia. Investigators say Philadelphia police officers were dispatched to a shots fired call Saturday around 10 o'clock at the Family Fun Center. The victims were transported to the hospital by personal vehicles. Three of the four were ultimately airlifted to UMC for further medical treatment. The victims range in age from 18 to 45. Their conditions are unknown at this time. Depot owner James Interkin says one of the shooting victims was retrieving his younger brother that was bowling at the time. Interkin says the number one thing on his mind was the security of his business and the patrons inside. My security officers doing what they're supposed to do when we found out about the incident. We locked the doors and, and asked him to leave because uh, we got to keep our uh, patrons safe inside the facility. We just secured the doors and tried to make sure they were safe and uh, my security officers, once everything was secured inside and everybody was safe, they went outside to make sure there was nothing wrong in the parking lot. They checked the cars and stuff to make sure there was nothing going on outside the building. Well, no names have been released at this time. The incident is under investigation. We'll have more information as it becomes available. Well, an inmate at Wilkinson County Correctional Facility was found dead in his cell Saturday. Mississippi Department of Corrections says officers were discovered, our officers there discovered the body of 39-year-old Jesus Garcia and immediately began life-saving measures that were ultimately unsuccessful. Garcia was pronounced dead just before 1 o'clock yesterday afternoon. The cause of death is under investigation. MDOC says there were no obvious signs of assault. And at least one person is injured after a two-car crash this afternoon. The accident happened around 5 o'clock at the intersection of Tarleton Road and Highway 45 South near Crawford. One person was taken to the hospital by ambulance. The cause of the accident and the condition of the victim are unknown at this time. We're going to have more information on that as it becomes available. Two Pickens County schools are set to reopen Monday after the flu forces a shutdown. The schools were closed Thursday and Friday after a flu outbreak sidelined a large number of students. According to the Associated Press, the principal at Pickens County High School reported 70 students went home sick with flu symptoms on Wednesday. Teachers and other staff spent Thursday mopping floors and wiping down desks, lockers, and other surfaces to disinfect the school. Schools all across the state have been hit hard by the flu in the past week. The flu is going around, but after today, I think many of us have some spring fever with all of the beautiful weather we had. We are down to 52 in Starkville with a clear sky and light winds out of the south between 3 and 8 miles an hour. We warm up again tomorrow back into the upper 60s and low 70s in the region. However, not as much sunshine for us tomorrow. Clouds are already building off to our west, and that is with our next system winding up. That system will bring us the chance for showers as early as Monday night and showers and thunderstorms Tuesday. Tuesday and on Wednesday, there is the chance that some of this could be on the strong side here as we move forth. We'll be sure and talk all about that coming up. In addition, once we get through these severe storms here with gusty winds and heavy rain, we do need to watch the storm track and intensity for details, but cooler weather is back on the way. We'll tell you all about that coming up in just a bit. Louisville Police Department celebrates a new D.A.R.E. graduate. Virginia McDonald, a patrolman with the Louisville PD, recently completed her D.A.R.E. officer training. Police officers from all around the country travel to Mississippi and Alabama to take part in the semi-annual training seminar. During training, officers learn how to tackle issues like underage vaping, bullying, and mental health. They then take these lessons and present them to area 5th and 7th grade classrooms. Officer McDonald has been with the Louisville Police Department for about two years now. It is very exciting to see someone uh, graduate from the DARE curriculum. I think it's important at any age uh, to take this curriculum into the schools. I think it's beneficial for fifth grade as well as middle school because the middle schoolers, they're changing, their emotions are changing, so it's important to reach those middle schoolers. I have three kids of my own, so, um, you know, spending time with other kids. I mean, I just love kids, and it means a lot to me, and I'm excited about it. The Mississippi D.A.R.E. program is partnered with Alabama's D.A.R.E. program. Well, it may be the last place you would expect to get hyped up for the Super Bowl, your church sanctuary. 
but a Tupelo church has found a way to use the biggest game of the year to bring souls to salvation. WCBI's Tyler Hall was in the service this morning and has more on the story. Mixing faith, football, and fun, Cornerstone Baptist Church in Tupelo scored a win with parishioners with this special celebration of the Super Bowl. Today is Football Sunday, as we all know, and this is a place where we can connect our fun and faith together for the big game. And the atmosphere in the sanctuary was just as exciting and electric as Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. This annual event members look forward to. And so we have Football Sunday every year, and uh, we pack this place out with some incredible time of worship, the word, and incredible video testimonies from NFL players. Members and guests came decked out in their favorite team's gear, ready to cheer, praise, and have a good time. Absolutely. We're promoting it on social media. We're telling them weeks in advance, hey, come wearing your favorite stuff. We even give out prizes to the kids that wear the best dressed, and so uh, we're excited. We love doing it. It's awesome. And the church even has something special planned to give the crowd a boost of energy. So Super Sunday, we have cheerleaders come in. It's just so high energy. We have a drum line come in. Tyler Hall, WCBI News. Well, this is the fourth year the church has held its football Sunday service. TVs, tablets, computers, and cell phones, all these screens can be harmful to your eyes. But there may be an easy solution. mom to mom is next. PM with Cash Matlock. Welcome back, everyone. Between TVs, cell phones, tablets, and computers, a large portion of our day is spent looking at a screen, and that can take a toll on your eyes. This week on mom to mom they've got a solution that could stop this issue without cutting down any of your screen time. Take a look. Today on mom to mom we're going to show you how these can make a big difference in your child's health. Blue light blockers are all the rage right now, and I've got Dr. Miller here to tell us all about these and if they really work. So, Dr. Miller, what are these? Like, what is blue light blocker lenses? Yeah, so blue light is a spectrum of light very similar to that given off by the sun. So, if you think about it, our bodies are designed to function with the rhythm of the sun. So, it's called our circadian rhythm. And when you start to mess with your circadian rhythm, it can affect things like the way you pay attention, how rested you feel. Long-term effects of being exposed to blue light can even cause things like like weight gain, depression, increase of risk things like uh, blood pressure issues and even cancer. So just by wearing blue light blocking glasses, it's going to not only give your kid the energy they need, help them sleep better, but can really set them up for long term benefits. And so do these actually work? They absolutely do, guys. Your kids are uh, being exposed from their phones, from their tablets, from their computers, even the TVs at night. So by wearing these glasses, and you can even have ones that look like mine where you can't even tell they're blue light blockers, mm -hmm. but it's going to reduce your risk of things like anxiety, depression. Um, it's even been shown extra exposure to blue light can cause even weight gain and increase your risk of heart disease. Seriously, weight gain? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yep, so wearing these blue light blockers when you're in front of a screen, it's going to help you sleep better. It's going to be overall just better for their, uh, their systems in general. So there you go. If you were having any questions about the blue light blockers, this is perfect. Get your kids some, get yourself some. Dr. Miller, thank you so much. As always, moms, check out our Facebook page and we'll see you on the next Mom to Mom. Well, Super Bowl weekend can be a slow one at the box office. So, did any films break through the football frenzy? David Daniel has the weekend estimates for the top five films. So what is that? Is that the Gentleman took fifth place in its second weekend out, grossing $6 million. Gretel and Hansel opened at number four with $6.1 million, slightly more than it cost to make. Robert Downey Jr. and Doolittle managed to stay in third place, picking up $7.7 .7 million. Colonel McKenzie is in command of the second. He sent word yesterday morning he was going after the retreating Germans. The award-winning war drama 1917 is at 119 million domestic after a second place weekend worth 9.7 million dollars. Mike, Mike, Relax. Mike, bus, bus, Relax. bus, bus, bus. Yeah. The long-awaited threequel Bad Boys for Life took the top spot for the third straight weekend, making 17.7 million dollars for a domestic total of 148 million. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. The weekend's other new wide release, The Rhythm Section, opened way down in 10th place with just $2.8 million, the worst debut ever for a movie opening in more than 3,000 locations. 
We stay warm for the next few days, but whenever it's warm this time of year, we have to watch the chance for showers and thunderstorms. That's the case for us here moving forth, including the chance for strong storms. We'll talk all about that, plus what happens this upcoming weekend right here after the break. CBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with meteorologist Jacob Dickey. After a beautiful day, we have a clear sky continuing into tonight. Temperatures are down in the 40s and 50s in the region with south winds between 3 and 8 miles an hour. That will continue overnight tonight. Right now, sitting at 48 in Columbus and in Starkville, 53 in Tupelo. West Point is at 51. Tonight, I expect us to drop down into the middle 40s in the region. Another quiet and cool night. We will call it mostly clear, but there may very well be some clouds moving on in after midnight. Some high, thin, cirrus clouds. And then tomorrow morning, likely dealing with some cloud cover in the region. Still, though, not bad tonight. A bit warmer than we were last night. 45 in Columbus and in Starkville. 46 in Eupora. Bruce at 48. I've got 47 in Houston. Here's what Futurecast has. Notice some of these clouds starting to fill on in here early Monday morning. Monday during the daytime really looks mostly cloudy ahead of our next system. There may be some pockets of sunshine out there, but nothing like we saw today. We still will be warm, though, with temperatures in the upper 60s and lower 70s. The good news is any showers will hold off after sunset, and that's when we'll start to see the chance for some showers heading into Monday evening and Monday night, continuing into Tuesday and Wednesday with this system sliding on through the region. Some batches of showers and storms seem likely across the area. For tomorrow, though, look for highs in the low 70s and upper 60s. I've got 71 in Velma and in New Holka, 71 also in Mantachie, 70 in Baldwin, West Alabama increasing clouds, south winds 5 to 15 miles an hour, 72 in Ethel's. And in Kingville, 71 in Detroit, and the Golden Triangle, 72 in Winston, 71 in New Hope, and in Mayhew, Brooksville, getting up to 71. I've got 73 in Vaden for our Monday. We're watching the system build off to our west here, and as it does so, showers start again Monday evening into Tuesday. The track of it, though, rarely will affect what happens with us here moving forth. We may get some strong storms Tuesday evening and Tuesday night in the region, and then the chances there for another round somewhere across the Twin States heading into Wednesday afternoon and evening, though the track of this low will very much make the uh, depend on where those storms end up. Here's what the Storm Prediction Center has Tuesday. I a slight risk west of I-55. All of us are in a marginal risk, a level one risk, a very low chance. And then Wednesday, we see a level two risk for most, if not all, of our WCBI viewing area, though it's a very wide window here. Again, dependent on the track. So we get a few storms here coming in on Tuesday night, then another round Wednesday. Here's what might happen. If that low pressure stays off to our north and west, that would mean severe weather is possible in our region. However, if that low pressure takes a more southerly track here, we'd be on the cooler side of things, keep showers and storms, but the severe weather stays away. This would be a better scenario for us here, but we just can't rule out which one will come. And because of that, we'll continue to advertise a standard level two threat with gusty winds and flash flooding the main threats here. 20 the threat looks low. I'm not overly worried. We'll monitor that moving forth as we go over the next 48 hours before things start to arrive in our region. So showers and thunderstorms continue to be expected most of Tuesday and Wednesday. Several rounds of them moving on through. By Thursday afternoon, the rain will end. We'll be cooler into the weekend. It's time to honor the ones who excel on the court and in the classroom. Our WCBI Student Athlete of the Month is next in Sports with Court. WCBI Sports with Courtney Robb. In any sport, there are players who show up to practice and to games doing their best, giving the game their all. And then there are players who go the extra mile, always in the gym, shooting, leading, and keeping themselves accountable to just be better. Mantachi guard forward McKinley Montgomery is that dedicated player as well as student. That's why we're recognizing her as our Student Athlete of the Month. Take a look. Scoring 1,000 career points in high school basketball is rare. Scoring 2,000? That's almost unheard of. Let me introduce you to Mantachi Senior Garden forward McKinley Montgomery, the only female Mustang in school history to complete such a feat. It, it was a big, big goal for me because I've been working for it my whole life. But um, I was just proud of our team, and I know I couldn't do it without them because they're the ones that had to pass me the ball for me to do it. The night that she hit 1,500, I said, it doesn't stop here. You're hitting 2,000 before you graduate. How does any player get to that point? Coach White will tell you Montgomery isn't like every other high school athlete. Could easily go to Sonic or grab a 
biscuit at McDonald's or whatever, she comes and shoots. A lot of kids come and play ball, and then they go home and they do a bunch of other stuff. And it's it's 100% basketball and softball and volleyball and everything else. She's always doing some, something athletic. The high level of dedication is clear for the Mantachi basketball standout. Montgomery has lettered in 10 varsity sports, all while maintaining a 4.0 GPA and taking college courses. I usually go play my basketball game on Friday night and go home and study, or on Tuesday night, go home and study every night, or even like on bus rides to the game, I have to do my homework sometimes. I don't know what I'd do if I didn't play sports. I wouldn't know what to do. I, it, it keeps me busy. It definitely does that. While Montgomery is known for being a well-rounded player, she will be remembered for her leadership and the trust she's built with her team. I would let her do anything she wanted to do in this program because I know it's going to be done right. Like, I would trust her to coach this team if I couldn't coach it. Clearly, clearly some very high praise from head coach Kevin White there. Although Montgomery has her 2,000th career point, she said her work's not done. Right now, she's currently focusing on helping Mantachi make a deep run in the playoffs. However, the basketball standout saying that her first love is softball, and next year she's set to play on the diamond for the softball team at Itawamba Community College. I doubt you missed it. However, just in case you did, the Chiefs versus the 49ers in the big game. Those highlights when we come back. WCBI Student Athlete of the Month is brought to you by Canon. Nobody had a better game than this player of the week. And nobody beats a Canon deal. Nobody. The most anticipated game all year, Super Bowl 54, the San Francisco 49ers and the Kansas City Chiefs matching up for the big title. And from the beginning to halftime to the end, it did not disappoint. Let's get to the big game down in Miami, featuring two of the best quarterbacks in the game, Jimmy Garoppolo and Patrick Mahomes. Early in the first quarter, wide receiver Debo Samuel takes the toss. A 32-yard pickup and a first down. San Francisco picks up a field goal off that. 49ers up 3-0. Two and change in the first. Mahomes scrambles out of the pocket. Inside the five. Takes a huge hit. The ball gets knocked out of bounds. San Fran still up 3-0. First, two to go. Chiefs going for it on fourth and one. Running back Damian Williams takes the snap. Picks up the first down. And two plays later, Mahomes keeps it, finds the end zone. Mahomes with the one-yard touchdown in his first Super Bowl. Kansas City on top, 10-3, to second quarter. QB Jimmy Garoppolo finds fullback Kyle Juszczyk, breaks the tackle and finds the end zone. A 15-yard touchdown. It's all tied up at 10, headed into halftime. Five to go, third quarter, Chiefs on top. Mahomes throws, but is picked off by linebacker Fred Warner. Niners take over at their own 45. Running back Raheem Mostert finishing it off. The one-yard carry into the end zone. San Fran up 20 to 10. Fourth quarter, seven to go. Mahomes looking. Bombs one. Wide.